My name is Deirdre Darden. I am the guest curator of Between a Rock and a Soft Place. There's a common phrase between a rock and a hard place. I thought when talking about rest that this exhibition was really uh, opposition to the hard place. We've been specific about wall color and creating a calm environment. There's space on the other part of the gallery that is specifically like a rest stop with some literature that inspired the exhibition, a place to sit and really take it all in. I hope that this exhibition provides a chance for the viewer to contemplate their own relationship with rest and just walk away from the exhibition, reconsidering how they can incorporate rest into their life. I'm Katie O'Keefe, and I'm a fiber artist. My work has a lot to do with my personal difficulty settling into rest. I have Lyme disease. I live with chronic pain. Through the repetition of sewing, I try to contextualize the sensations that are going on throughout my body. All my work starts with a simple drawing of my body. As a template, I enlarge that drawing overlaying tool on top. I will sandwich those layers between two layers of dissolvable interfacing and stitching on top of it with a machine. Sometimes I will then sew another layer of silk organza and do some hand embroidery. When it comes to the different colors and the layers of tool and stitching, I see the red as the internal world, raw, and unfiltered, whereas the figures that are in full color are rooted in the material world. How I view myself or how others would view me. My work is based in the idea of self-reflection. I am trying to capture the representation of fat bodies in these figures. There's beauty within the different layers of folding skin and beauty within seeing yourself honestly. The idea of healing and self-reflection, you can't have healing without taking time for oneself and settling into rest. My name is Adjua Burroughs. I'm an art educator at a private school in Oakton, Virginia. Initially, I had this idea of incorporating something found in the natural world. That thing was a cocoon. I started thinking of where this structure lives naturally, and that's how I came to the garden. I made this two-sided acrylic painting called Earth, I Thank You, which was made on archival paper using acrylic paint that represents the vibrancy of three gardens that I visited in Northern Virginia. This painting is hung from the ceiling and it spins every so often when activated by the air in the gallery. The title is an homage to Anne Spencer, who is a poet, an activist, educator, and gardener during the Harlem Renaissance. I also made a series of six prints, which is made from plant matter that was given to me from two of the three gardeners that I interviewed during this project. I use a brayer to ink up this soft gelatin plate with oil-based water-soluble ink. And I repeat the process in some prints to make several impressions on each sheet to give this layered effect. And then I have this painting called Soil Sanctuary, which is on canvas. And you see those deep, rich hues of green and brown orbs that represent the cycle of life in the natural world thinking about African-Americans' relationship to the earth, the land and how we were forced to till and toil for other people's profit. Enslaved Africans managed to keep their own garden plots to feed their families and community and heal their own wounds. The concept of a garden as a place of restoration for the spirit and soul. My name is Holly Bass. I'm a visual and performance artist based in Washington, D.C. My work centers around representation of Black women in particular. I wanted to create a work that not only felt restful for the viewer, but had a restful process for me as an artist. 
a lot of times when I'm making work, I do a lot of long durational performances where I'm dancing for seven hours or 12 hours. It's stressful and really intense. This struck me as an opportunity to try something different. And that's how I landed on a video piece of me resting. I also thought about Manet's famous painting, Olympia, where there's a Black woman who's the servant to them, the white female nude, and she's presenting flowers. Instead, I present flowers to myself, and then I decide to rest. I went back and forth about making it a multi-hour video. where I'm really going to take a nap, and you're really going to watch me take the whole nap. But I thought it would be easier for me and for the viewer to do a shorter loop as an artist makes me think through what does it mean to have a restful practice? How can I more and more begin to approach my work with this idea that I don't have to exhaust myself to make something beautiful and compelling? My name is Britt Sankofa. I'm an artist who works in theater, film, and video installation. Water damage theory, I invite the audience to sit directly across from the screen and put on the headphones, listening to the soundscape of my mind chatter. Sit in a quiet place. Sit comfortably and breathe. Get a sense of me as a woman trying to find rest in a time of social unrest. This exhibition called out my difficult relationship to rest, whether it's my never-ending to-do list or my mindless scrolling on social media. I had this idea of myself as a robot, so frustrated with external distractions. She runs into the river as a means of radical self-care. I like to use recycled materials, vintage and antique electronics. The largest piece is made from plywood, but some of the pieces that create the figure sitting in Sadasana is made from different electronics that I found just lying around or at thrift stores. The moon shape represents the do not disturb symbol on my iPhone device. That symbol functions as a way to let others know I'm cutting off communication and choosing to prioritize my personal needs. Quilting is taking bits of materials and weaving them together to keep warm. Even the act of editing footage is similar to quilting, taking bits and pieces, crafting them together to form a narrative. It all goes into the tradition of storytelling, which is indicative of my African and Southern heritage. I wanted to carry on that tradition in new and contemporary forms. Deborah R. Grayson is a printmaker and independent scholar. What follows are her thoughts about the three images she created for this exhibition. They are part of a larger body of work about the interior lives of Black people and how they actively live, not always burdened or trapped by the expectation of resistance but actively live in their lives just by being. Through portraiture, I am able to explore a kind of peace and a kind of quiet that is expressive, full, active, that captures the nuance, beauty, and dimensionality of Black lives, which often gets drowned out by the necessity of always having to say truly obvious and basic things like Black Lives Matter. What would happen if as their basic needs are being met, there is a greater recognition of the spaces Black people inhabit that are quiet, contemplative, reflective, mundane? The freedom then to wonder and to wander into interior spaces, to explore these moments and to center them, provides a more expansive way to represent the fullness of the matters of Black life. This exhibition is the 2023 iteration of the Mary B. Howard Invitational. The Invitational is a biennial program which values exhibition making as a collaborative and generative process between the artist and the curator, while supporting the development and public presentation of innovative new work by regional artists. Named in memory of Mary B. Howard, an artist, 
longtime board member, and staunch supporter of TEFRA ICA. This exhibition is funded in part by Arts Fairfax.